Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Central computer complex in the Huju system. Excellent. And other things, we have research colonies being built everywhere. Perfect, 525,000. I like it. I like it. We're getting there. So, now that we have 500,000, I'm honestly believing that we can get somewhere with stellar manipulation. It's going to be a huge investment. No one ever said it wouldn't be. But hopefully level 10, 15-ish we can uh, hit up and get things that uh, allow us to get rid of clouds. Because that's a thing. That's something I really care about. But, you know, this technology it needs to be researched. We can't just not do it. Unfortunately. So, in other news, we have the Deslingrad Death Knot Dreadnoughts. Death Knot seems fine. We're going to spend about 24 turns pretty much just hot skipping as fast as possible, I think. Um, other than doing some colonial work each turn uh, in the Huju system. Well, we build up an actual self-sufficient uh, full armada attack fleet. That's just going to flat roll through everything. With 11 squares of movement, they're fast dreadnoughts. Level 4 and level 5, and still in manipulation. Ooh. Yeah, people get happy when you construct facilities, because it makes them feel important. I haven't actually worried too much about my empires. Yeah, treaty. We're just at war now. I should have a look at the empire. Give me the system display, please. There's that. Uh, Right. I forget. I, I have absolutely no idea where the uh, happiness thing is. I know it's you can access it somewhere. I think it's here. Uh-oh. There we are. Yeah, this is where we can access uh, things. Oh, yeah, you can just send colonizer. Interesting. Interesting. All right, rock colony. Go we'll colonize that. It will be a research compound indeed. Hmm. First things first, we need the atmospheric modification plant, which takes nine turns to build, and then, you know, even more to work. Uh, abandon the planet. Not quite. I know there is a way to, like, scrap facilities or something. I don't know. I know this button is for stellar manipulation stuff that I don't have yet. Because <laughs> I'm still researching these things. <laughs> we have to get to level 10 before we actually get anything. Other than the monolith facility. Mind you, the monolith facility is pretty badass, so I don't know. You have a thingy here, yeah? No, you don't. You don't have anything for repairs. That's a bit of a problem. I mean, sensors are pretty much knocked out for the damn thing. Not sure what to say about that. Or if I should even do anything about it. Hmm. It might just be better to blow it up or whatever. Yeah, no. Go repair it nearest. Shoot that orders is, is expected. Alright. So the Huju system, we're going to fully colonize it and turn it into a gigantic research complex. It's going to be quite a system. Level 7 stellar manipulation. Yep, the population, the Huju system is growing. Happier. Because we're investing so much into it. Okay. Research compound. Drop down the atmospheric modification plant. 
Good. Yeah. It's going to take a while. But it'll be worth it. It'll be worth it. In the end. There are the various things coming along here anyway. Still another two turns before the space yard's done. Then there's the resupply depot. And... Well, the good news is all the building should be done really quickly, actually. Oh man, I can't wait for the system computer complex to be done. Oh, that's going to be a huge boost to research. Which is already at 560,000 and climbing. Like, as long as I can do stellar manipulation in one turn, I will probably do stellar manipulation. I've been, you know, falling behind like heck on it. Not that it matters, because I still have more research points than most people in this game. Read all point people in this game, probably. I hope so. Unfortunately, stellar manipulation is just that expensive. It takes for freaking ever to get anywhere. A new Teslingrad dreadnought is ready. Good. You are to guard the Coltan Waypoint. Or Warp Gate, or whatever the hell it is. Um, yep, yeah, okay. So, still doing stellar manipulation. We can do two more levels of it. Four ships without orders. Ah, colonies are ready. Are right, you research compound? Okay. And begin the construction of the atmospheric modification plant. Good. We fully m manipulate everything here. It is important. The system, the Huju system, will basically become our de facto research capital. With all these planets pumping research right into us. Okay. Level 9 in stellar manipulation. New space yard facility has been in, built, built in the Huju system. So, how long will it be until uh, everything else is done? Not long at all. Thanks to the massive construction rate. So, over like the next six turns or so. Am I a short and ice colonizer? I am. Maybe. Well, there appear to be three ice planets. So, yeah, it appears we're a short and ice colonizer. Okay. Toss that in there. There. So now we'll have all the ice colonies as well. Wait, is yeah, okay, so yeah, one, two, three. Indeed. And you? You have an atmospheric modification plan to build. Man, the frame rate's really starting to tank. It's down to like 10. Mind you, this game never had good frame rate in the first place. Like, it runs at 25 frames per second on my machine. If Even if I'm not recording. There we go, it's back up to a nice 20. There's too much shit in the system now. Like I said, it was never a very uh, well-optimized game. Black hole, like, it's not the particle effects doing it, because now it's running at 30. This, hey, even higher than 30. There you go. Oh, dear. Oh, well, where were we? Uh, so yeah, I guess we keep going still in manipulation, because we now uh, can research the Beta Displacement Pulsar. Ooh, hoo, hoo. The beta displacement pulsar. The first actual stellar manipulation device that we get. It's lovely. We're actually getting a tangible return from stellar manipulation, finally. Oh, dear. Which is good. It's good. Level one. So... 
Yeah, the beta displacement pulsar, the first thing that we've received from it. So, it's a component. And here we are. We'll destroy a storm of size one. So that's m pretty much no storm. Yeah, not great. Component is destroyed after use. You'll find that to be the cause with uh, most like uh, stellar manipulation devices. Uh, component is destroyed after use is something you'll read fairly commonly. So yeah, hey, we're 550,000 research up. I mean, it's nothing, right? All right. So every time that reads 0 0.1 years, I will continue to research. And I'm fine with that. Oh yeah, right. Forgot about the colonizers. Should get to that. Go to the ice planets, colonize those, and the Hoosier system is fully ours. Then I'll probably put, like, a massive defensive platform. <laughs> Somewhere. Yeah, so now we have the Bay of Displacement Pulsar level 2, which eh, improves the size of the storm that I can dissipate. Still 600,000, so uh, this is probably be the last level of storm manipulation we can research. I mean, I guess I could just keep researching since we have extra levels invested in it, and it'll just slowly go down over time, but still. And get to level 15, we get the next thing. Man, this system is so bad for frame rates. Ugh. Christ, it's gonna be nice when I never have to come back here again. There we are, one atmospheric modification plant. There. I know I have a bunch of ships without orders, but that's far from what I actually care about right now. Because those are all just the dreadnoughts. That have been rolling off the production line. They're self-sufficient, so... Things should be okay. It is indeed a research compound. In the Huju system, yes. Wow. So bad. It seems to be the star doing it, because, like, every time the window comes up, I gain, like, a bunch of frames. But then if I do this, the frame rate drops drastically, so... Who knows? Oops, no, I want to add the item. Right. The atmospheric modification plants have been added in. Okay. So we don't need to come back to the system for however many years. Probably, well, it's probably been a while since the first one was planted. Yeah, Alright, so it's at least another eight turns where we have to come back here and build things. So all the atmospheres will be hydrogen. Yeah. I think that's about as far as we can get in stellar manipulation for now. Let's go to a different system. There we are. So yeah, that's stellar manipulation about done. Unfortunately. For the time being, we're not at the increasing rate. We need level 30 to 35 before we can uh, start opening warp points. Or maybe that might just be closing warp points. Might need as much as tech 40 before we can start doing anything with warp points. Which is concerning. It's a lot of XP. But I've been really trying to pump out the XP lately. Yep. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. There we go. Ta da! That only took 30% of my research budget and researching all types of hulls. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. 
And that's how bad Zilla manipulation is for researching. It's just awful. Awful. Kill it. Kill it with fire. Should consider some other stuff as well. Um, uh, higher just hard weapons. Oh, the Ripper Beams. Those are fun. Those, those The Ripper Beams are interesting because their range is 10. But they're the most deadly weapon in the game. Uh, you generally, like, put them on frigates or whatever. And just, uh, you know, have them be little death beams. <laughs> More fighters, I guess. Because they have the incinerator beam, which I believe does a similar thing. Uh, let's see. Troops. Yeah, we should develop things like that as well. We haven't had any actual plagues yet. Which is strange. Like, I generally don't bother developing medical treatment until we have the first plague. Oh, I know why we don't have any plagues. I friggin' colonized so much. I'm gonna get hit by hard by that in the late game. Like, is the, is the home planet even recovered yet? No, it's at half. Yeah, so we're not in danger of having any plagues happen to us. Uh, biological disasters happen generally when your planet is at maximum or close to maximum population. Which... Since I have a very slow growth rate, which is actually one of the reasons why I picked the slow growth rate, it's not going to happen. It does suck to uh, have low populations, because that does reduce um, construction capacities, but it's meh. It's handleable. Okay. Let's just develop shields. Got nothing better to develop. Go for level 99 shields! 99 shields! Boom. Mm. Develop shields to their logical conclusion. Then we'll develop the mason blaster to its logical conclusion. Man, those will be expensive to build. Like, we haven't even hit the tip of the iceberg of expenses. Every level makes the next makes the object more expensive to put onto your ships. So, yeah. Shields went straight to 46. Alright, let's continue developing uh, these things. In one turn each. There we are. Large base construction is actually about to finish. And everything else is at level 6 now, so... You know, hull construction's going up. We don't have to do too much right now. Which is why I'm relaxingly investing in shielding. I don't want to get too decadent. But, I mean, I think I can just throw it in a stellar manipulation. Really? It's an applied science? Hmm. I won't comment. You know, at least we are getting research points into it that way. And besides, we're over 650,000. No. Let's not get decadent. Let's not get decadent. Just go with shields. Go with shields. It's the easy way. Going with shields. Because, I mean, eventually we'll get, like, super destructive death shields. That won't do any actual death because they're shields and not guns, but you get my gist. You get my gist. They'll be impenetrable. Level 7 in all hull constructions. Excellent, excellent. So... Still 0 0.1 years across the board. Perfect. We still have an extra 11%. There we are. Throw that in there. Hey, uh, something is done. That's a small shield generator, isn't it? That's missing? Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah. So we've developed the small shield generator to its maximum. Probably. Mm -hmm. 157 shield points. 1,600. And climbing. 
There we are. Like, the shield technology that we're developing is great. It's going to ensure practically our immortality. Our shields are already five times as strong as when they started even... Actually, no, wait, they're eight times, because they started at 200, a point, 200 uh, points, I believe. Like, when I started using shields and they're, like, level 15, they're at 300-something, so... You know. I am medium, medium heavy, heavy base... Level 61 in shields, level 62 in shields. There you go. Oh man. Now you have to reduce investment into shielding slightly. Whatever will we do? Alright. Boom, boom. Just need 2%. Okay, so they're all about to hit level 9 and then level 10 and then we'll uh, have maxed out our ships. This is nice and relaxing. Nice and relaxing. So, atmosphere's still working. Still gonna be a few more turns. Vroom, vroom, vroom. There we go. I mean, those dreadnoughts, like, we already have shields 50% more powerful than they do. Which is a significant upgrade in and of itself that I should probably be applying, but, uh, not really. Hmm. Alright. Level 69 in shields. Nice. Nice. Oh no, it looks like we need a whole extra 1% to finish off, uh... Finish off this stuff. Yeah, I don't think I can reduce the investment on any of them. There we go. So, all hulls will be finished now, and all will become equally viable. And Christ, our shield technology... Okay, shield regenerator is now done. We're just pumping the shield generators at this point. I don't think I've even gone this high in shield tech before. I didn't even realize that, that the shield regenerator ended. Holy shit, it ends at level 40. 80 per second, holy shit. Alright. 2,100. Yeah, we're at shields are twice as powerful as the ones on the Dreadnought now. It's like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. At least another 13 turns until the fleet is complete, and then we will go on a complete rampage. Alright. I'm really concerned about using the small warp point, though. I feel like I should use small ships. I suppose it's the intent. Oh well, we're going to end today's episode here, everyone, so thank you everybody for watching. As always, this has been your lovely host, Galvin, signing off.